Can We Talk podcast episode 61. I have a special guest in the building, someone I've known since the age of, I think, 11 or 10. I, I don't know. We met in elementary school. Fifth grade. Fifth grade. So 11, and you were probably like, how old were you? Like in a year older than me, 12? 12. 12. 12. Yep. I got Tori Lonzo in the building. He's a little nervous being on the pod, just a little bit. I'm only a few months older than you. Okay. That's a big difference in school years because technically you should have graduated 2010. Yeah. Okay, but I just turned 30, and you're just turning 30. I'm not 30 yet. I'm 29. <laughs> Excuse me? I got seven days. Because I have, I now that I have kids, I understand how, like, the school aging works, and I would have been, like, if I would have been in my grade, I would have been, like, the youngest in my grade. grade. So. Instead, you're the oldest in ours, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> works out. Yeah, but, yeah, don't put that 30 shit on me yet. I'm 29. Hey, <laughs> just be happy that I had a car before everybody Facts. and I was able to drive you Facts. and Brandon to school. Facts. That's that's true, right? And the, anytime I think about that time back in high school, I think of the Popeye's like rap. Like that has never it never come back. I don't know if you remember what that rap was. It was like a tortilla with chicken strips, red beans and rice, wrapped up. I get a box of fries and yeah. good old fucking time. Put tons of fucking ketchup and pepper and shit on that. It was so good. I remember. I remember like just making a meal out of the large fry. Like we'd go up there and order and be like, "I just want a large fry," and they'd be like, "Is that all?" It's like, "Yeah, yeah. that's all I can afford, man." That and it's it's an entire box of fries. Like, what can, can you eat more than that? We won't say you're old, right? Because you know you're thirty and I'm like twenty nine, so that really makes you old, like in my eyes. But you've never lifted our Uber before. No. I find that weird. Dude, I'm I am an old soul, man. Like my wife tells me, I'm an old man all the time. They had taxis back in the day. I've I've ridden in taxis, dude. I've ridden in rickshaws. Like the little was, scooter thing. Yeah, the, the thing that they. Yeah, yeah. I've done that. Hmm. But you've never lifted. But I've or, never I've never lifted or <laughs> Ubered Uber. or anything rideshare nothing. Hmm. Rideshare is kind of wild, like sharing your vehicle, like sharing your car with other people. Like I would never book a Uber or Lyft with like the pool things. Oh yeah. So like you can have like mul- they'll pick up multiple people before they get to you. Oh yeah. Yeah no, I'm cool on that. Come pick me up. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's not a bad idea. I just I'm I'm really impulsive. So when I want to leave, it's time to I'm, go. It's time to go. Like I'm not waiting around. <laughs> Like I've I've almost left people at places because they were fucking around too long, and I'm like, no, we're like I'm leaving right now. <laughs> you can either come and get in the car, or you will find another You'll ride. You'll have home. to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Uh, when I used to live here, after my first year of college, I moved back, and me and a couple of guys, we would go to like Grand Central Station when it was oh, still rest like, in peace, man. Yeah, we used to go there, and there were several times where I was like. I'm leaving right now because I got work <laughs> at like 6 a.m. So y'all better be in my car by the time I get there or... <laughs> it's time to go. It's You better figure it out. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, I think that... I still think that's weird that you never Uber or Lyft it. Because I don't, I, I don't usually use Ubers or Lyft to come from a bar somewhere. Like, I always usually try to establish that before I get there. It's always like if I got to go to the airport or... You know, where I can't literally bring my car or like the game we're going to. I would hate for you to figure out parking there. It's fucking ridiculous. Like, See, and it's expensive. Like, their parking that's next to the stadium is like $100. Oh, yeah. No, I, I <laughs> don't doubt it at all. But I grew up like, like, I used to go to events and stuff with my dad all the time. And we would, like, that was just kind of part of the, like the night before was kind of planning the route. Yep. So we, Okay, we're gonna park in this parking lot. Well, we literally get on Google Maps and be like, "We're gonna park in this parking lot." Map quest. That is this many miles away, or that's this distance, whatever it was. And you know, this parking lot's usually like twenty five bucks or something like that. And it was just kind of part of the experience. So, like, I always did that any event or whatever I'd go to. Uh, I just like <laughs> figured was, it out. Yeah, I just figured it out and be like, "We'll get here at this time." And then after that, it's free range, whatever you want to do. Whatever it is, huh? Dope, but I, I'm not gonna downplay you, right? I can't, I can't downplay you and what you've done for me. Like, we're gonna go see a soccer game today, right? I would have never played or even thought playing soccer was a thing. Now it's so much a part of my life. Like, I coached youth soccer for like many fucking years, little brats. Fucking, <laughs> this is probably that was like probably the best birth control. Like dealing with the fucking, 
<laughs> those super like those kids who were literally like because I did youth three first. So they put me on the shitty shit. Like, oh, I'm just dealing with three year olds. I'm like, kick the ball. And they're like, oh, let me find a sunflower. Like, <laughs> the, 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 excuse me? Like, <laughs> that don't co- equate. Like, I'll go defend. Oh, no, you would rather just give your mom a sunflower in the middle of the game. Cool. I Dude, can't say anything about it. My daughter, <laughs> when she's playing soccer, she runs around and pretends to be a vampire bat. So oh, yeah. she'll literally run around and, like, that's good tactics. Flap her wings. You gotta scare it's their opponent. Yeah. You gotta scare their opponents. But she doesn't ever try and get in the ball, so she just fall like she runs behind the group of kids. So <laughs> it's always the best, man. And then, and then I eventually got the opportunity after dealing with that for a long time, dealing with eight year olds. Same problem, but like more mature, like because they have more words to use. <laughs> like it's the same issue. Like they're still yeah. not focused, and then you have that one kid who's just like fire, like he's playing like messy, like the ball does not leave his his foot. <laughs> And you're like, oh, like just get him the ball. The game plan is get him the ball. <laughs> that was a, uh, yeah, it's hard. Like having played, <laughs> having played soccer for so long, and then getting to the level that I got to, like watching my daughter play, it is so frustrating. <laughs> and like, I don't, I, I can't be her team's coach because she's in rec. So you, mm-hmm. any parent can any be parent. the coach. But I don't, I don't have time to do that. Like yeah. I work a weird schedule. And like I just don't have time. <laughs> It's so frustrating to see like another guy coach my kid <laughs> and he doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing. And I'm yeah. like, he oh. might be a football coach as yeah. someone say, like we experienced. In high well, school. that or he's <laughs> like, he's, he's well-intentioned and he's trying to make it fun for him, which I get. But in my mind, like it's game time dog, you can make it fun and teach them good fundamentals. <laughs> like practice can be more than 10 minutes, 15 yeah. minutes. And you don't, like, I don't know, like, I see ways that you could improve and still make it fun for, like, really little kids and yeah. keep it engaging for them. Yeah, that's all, it's impossible, I promise you. Like, I, I've I've done fun events. I'll do, like, let's just do crossing for the whole day. Like, we're, I'm just going to cross the ball. Whoever scores, scores, we'll keep tally. We'll just make it fun. We're not even going to practice today. Nope. <laughs> see, but, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to teach them, like, teamwork quite yet. Like, that's a little bit too big of a skill in my mind, like, teaching them how to pass at that age. They need to learn, like, how to properly dribble the ball. Like, where do you keep it? Like, how do you keep it in front of you? How to turn with the ball? I've noticed that's a big problem. Like, they will, they don't, like, just touch the ball on the other side. Like, they run around the ball and then just kick it straight the opposite way. Yeah. Like, that's, and then it just bounces off people. That's just how it moves. Like, maybe, maybe I had more skilled youth because what I was coaching was club. So, like, their parents were, like, knowledgeable for the most part when it comes to, like, right. their kids. Like, so, I don't know if there's a difference. I, I didn't do rec. I didn't club. So, big Wells Branch setup. Like, the my bosses at the time were from Spain. Like, majority of them were, like, actually oh, yeah. from Spain. And they restrict as hell. <laughs> so, they expected <laughs> stuff to get done. Yeah. Like, literally, like, we'd have meetings, like, once a week. And then he would, in his broken English, just like, Calvin, he's... Diego, he's not he's not scoring enough, and I'm just like he's three. I don't I don't, I don't know what you want me to do. <laughs> you need to focus more on him. He's really talented. And I'm just like, I got you. But Diego also likes flies and mosquitoes, and he also likes to follow those too. So maybe we should put a mosquito or a fly on the ball. Maybe he'd be more focused. Used, I don't know. <laughs> that used to be me. Like my mom comments on it all. It's like those big ass dragonflies that fly around. I used to chase those. Yeah, that's like, what he would do. He was talented. Kid was three years old. I'm telling you, the ball would literally be on his foot, like touch, 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 and can strike at three. Yeah, but yeah, the boy liked mosquitoes. <laughs> 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 yeah, it was it was fun. Like coaching was fun, and it was something I wanted to do. I wanted to like build myself up, and it just didn't end up working. Yeah, I remember you. You were like dedicated. Like you went to yeah. school for it. And, like you were like, I'm gonna be. I wanted to be the a coach. And then I didn't want to be it anyway. It was, it was like it, the progression just wasn't there and the pay wasn't there either. But like I was getting paid a decent amount of money for at least that time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it was fun. And that only came from you. Like I promise you, have I, had I not met you, I would have never touched the soccer ball, thought about playing soccer. Like soccer is a part of my life now. Like I watch a lot of soccer. Like shout out to Manchester United. You know, we suck right now, but. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Well, you watch more soccer than I do, and I played it for so long. <laughs> and was like in love with that game, and I, I don't even, Why I don't not? recognize any. I don't know. Like 
I had a, like when I quit playing soccer, that was really hard for me, Mm -hmm. but I knew I had to do it. Like I wasn't going anywhere with it. Like I could have, I could have gotten to like amateur level, like maybe really low level pro maybe. And that was, that was as far as it was going. Like I wasn't going to make anything, you know, so I, and I had other interests that I wanted to get into. Like I wanted to be a mechanic and I wanted to learn that stuff and Mm -hmm. I had never gotten to learn that stuff. So I just kind of did that, but I, when I quit, I was so afraid of like getting stuck and like trying to go back to it Mm because that's all I knew that I just completely shunned it from my life for so long Damn. that I was just like, if I, if I start training again, even just to work out, like I'm going to want to play and I couldn't just go play at a rec league because I'm going to, I'm going to want to play up to the level that I used to play at and like. I'm going to want to train to be the best I can. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just don't have time for that, man. (laughs) Like I can't, I I can't dedicate my whole life to soccer. I played in a couple of different leagues, like in my early twenties, because I'm still 20, you know, I'm still (laughs) in my twenties. I I played in a few leagues. I did indoor soccer for a while. And then also like uh, dealing with the soccer program, a lot of the parents, again, this is like club soccer or whatever. So, a lot of them had played soccer in their youth, and they had a lot of like adult teams. And we would go out south to uh, play games. So I played in a lot of games, like when I was probably like 22, 23, 24, 25. And then, of course, having to travel for soccer was annoying too. Like, why can't we just all play at this one field up the street from my house? Right. Did you? Did you? <laughs> so did you play in the Austin's Men League? No, no, um, nothing, nothing too serious. It was more so like the parents that were that their kids were like. A part of my team would be like, come play with us, and I'd yeah. do that. And uh, also, just playing in that indoor rec league, that was... We used to coach in there, too. So, a lot of my... Uh, at that time, the three-year-olds and four-year-olds, we would actually... Our training sessions were in the uh, indoor soccer place that was off of... What was it? Uh, Grand Avenue? So, right up the street from... Um, you just said the club. Can't even think of it. Uh Gramps? Yeah. So there's a there's an insult, indoor soccer place like literally right up yeah, the street. Yeah. So that's where our practices started for the youth. So we, they weren't outside and the mosquitoes would come and all that stuff. So we'd always keep the little kids in indoors. Yeah. And as they got older, they'd play on the fields outside on Wells Branch. But for the most part, I usually just played leagues in there. And indoor soccer is, is a bitch. That shit sucks. It's not fun. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a different animal. It is a different animal. <laughs> it's just not fun at all. Like... You just scored. Okay, run it back. Like, yeah. What? Can <laughs> I celebrate? <laughs> yeah. No. Shout out to Austin Celtics, man. I used to play for them when I was a senior in high school. Because again, I was too old. So my like <laughs> my age group had graduated already, <laughs> and I had a whole senior year. Remember? Do you remember when we played? Did, were there? There was like a, a league or something. There was like a, a club team or something that was like sparring, sparring up or something like that. I don't. I think you were a part of that too. Like, it was a random club team. I don't, I don't know. No. Nah. It wasn't you? No. It was other people on the team. I don't know. I don't know. I just, I just remember going to the tryout, and it was crazy. Uh, are you talking about, like, the like with Steven Stribos and Luke Aiken and stuff? I don't fucking know. Because they had, they had their, like, they weren't part of a club, but they were, like, a club-level team, and they played, I think, Super 2. I don't know what it was, but, yeah. That might, I think that's because they, they wanted me to try out for them, too, and, like, because they weren't like an official club like Lone Star, Dallas Texans were in the t- back in the day. Like, oh, Austin's Austin's team is fire. I I do find myself going to so like I don't know if youth you know, teams. Yeah, so there's the yeah, the the actual youth academy is up the street from here on Tech Ridge for the FC. Mm-hmm. Oh snap! Yeah, they have a whole giant like I think it's like six or seven fields. Yeah, and then they have a main field for like really big games, yeah. but like stadium size. And they have a training facility, and there's an entire um, what's the word? Um, it's like a food hall, but it's made out of uh, what do you, oh, fuck. I wish I knew shit. Um, <laughs> what's those cargo ship thing? What are the cargo the, things? Just the cargo containers. Yes. Yeah. They have a whole like section over there filled with different restaurants oh, that dang. are built out of cargo. Sh- things or whatever. Yeah, the shipping containers. Um, and it's it's a really nice area. It's called uh, the Flats. Austin Flats. Yeah. And literally, you can literally just go grab some food, grab a drink, 
If you like soccer, you can go watch. You see all the teams from out of state come in here. Grass is nice. It's super nice. And it's not called the Flats. That's the name of the restaurant. I like it. It's called The Pitch. It's called The Pitch. But, yeah, that's where the Youth Academy is. That's dope. So, it, it's, it's, the facilities are amazing. Honestly, just walking through them, it's like, yo, okay. I, I, yeah, t- <laughs> let me be that age now. <laughs> right? I kind of like that. That makes me kind of envious. Like, I wish I would have been playing soccer now. Yeah, like, it's not like, because, you know, back in the day you had your Lone Stars and your Dallas Texans, right? But you had to be like, because I tried out for Lone Star and it was like, I got into club late and it was definitely like a, mm-hmm. a loyalty thing. So like, if you tried out, you had to have, like, you, could, you couldn't just try out and never have played for them before mm-hmm. and make the top team unless you were like, just some ungodly talented player, which mm-hmm. I was not. I was a little bit better than average, but I was not like, holy man, like we need this kid on our team. Yeah. So like I went from playing D1 and I went and tried out for them the next year because my team kind of dispersed and I went and tried out for them. I was like, oh, well, I should make the D1 team over there because I played against them and, you know, mm-hmm. we didn't lose. So I went and tried out and they put me all the way down on like, yeah right they put me on like division two and i was like really and i think that's what the push for the not only the mls but uh, men's u.s soccer and and women's u.s soccer is changing about the dynamics because like these club teams like they're there's a nashville mls team yeah (laughs) nashville us in austin uh there's there's literally in every major city at this point yeah i think an mls team so I think the U.S. national team is doing something to change a lot of stuff. Like when it comes to their uh, youth academy, because I spoke to someone about it when it first popped up. So I was like, what is all this shit? The soccer fields everywhere. It's going crazy. Um, they were saying basically like, yo, there's teams from two, three, four, five, six. Seven. It's an academy. Yeah. So you, if you start at three, right, you're going to make it to you, whatever. Yeah. Regardless of skill level. And then from you... I guess 18 or 20 or 21 or whatever. Yeah. Then you kind of get dispersed to MLS categories and, and different things like that. So yeah. it is based off a of skill, but they do give you the uh, foundation to learn and get better. Like yeah. they have skilled people from overseas that are now teaching these teams. And it's not like a loyalty program, like when it comes to the clubs and, and club teams and things like, and things like that. So it's not like, okay, if they don't like me, I'm not going to make it. No, it's more so like, yo, were you here at age three? Were you here at age four? Were you yeah. here at age five? Are you just not coming here at being 16? Or like, whatever the case may be. So I think they're fundamentally like changing exactly that structure that you just kind of like explained. Like yeah. they're changing that to make it easier. And that's why I think a lot of the MLS players now and also the the players that are like abroad that are U.S. players are in systems similar, like their farm systems now. Instead yeah. of like, instead of trying to grow the crop when you see it, you're growing the crop before you even know the talent there. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's, how it that's, be. that's for me, that's really the best way to do it. That's yeah. why, like, the EPL is so big and everything. Like, mm-hmm. they literally farm these kids from super young age well, just yeah. all the way in. His debut on the national stage is at age 16. He's been with this club since he was 10. Yeah. Or 7 or 8 or whatever. And, and you have footage of them, too. So, it's like you're watching them progress versus who can afford to put their kids in Lone Star, who can afford to put their kids in. Yeah. Well, and it's. It's nice to see that it's branching out to so much more like uh who's that player that was like Freddie Adu. Like oh, yeah. he made it in and he got in real young and he was in the what was it, F C Dallas Academy or something like that? I don't think they give him enough push and credit for what he actually did because well he was a he was 16 playing with grown men like you can't here's a documentary out too i need to watch soon. yeah like they, and, they outline all his shit and that's one thing i like i realized like going from like a pretty good level select and then going into college that's a big jump but when i was in college like we played professional teams in like the off season and stuff so mm-hmm. that our older players could get recruited by them and the led the difference between our like top players and just like the average professional player was so big. Yeah. Like, you know, these guys were stars. Like they were in the news in college and stuff like NCAA Mm -hmm. was writing about them and like, Oh, this is the best player in the league right now. Yeah. And then we'd play professional players and they would make these guys look like amateurs. Like they would make them look like children. 
Yeah, and I think that I mean, um, I I tried really hard years ago to watch uh, like college soccer. Like I've tried so hard. Yeah, <laughs> and I was like, I'm not at their level, but I'm like, this is terrible played soccer. Like they're not the. It's like they're being coached to play a different sport, but they're playing soccer because they're just talented. And, and then it, even like when it comes to the MLS draft, like no one watches that shit. They're still they're still just. <laughs> Like the the speed of the play isn't there. Absolutely like the different. skill, like the touch and everything. Like okay, that's fine. Like everyone, like ev- when you're playing in college, like everyone's got good touch. Everyone can pass the ball. That's fine. But it's those one two touches and like the speed of play is conditioning. Just, yeah, like it's <laughs> it's so much more and above and beyond what what college people, at least from my experience, were used to playing at. Like the college game was real slow and methodical kind of and keeping possession yeah it it had its fast moments but overall like watching a professional game and then watching like even a d1 college game it's no like close not even close yeah and i I don't think people even like just for whatever reason like the the system that we had in place years ago that that system is like abolished now like yeah you still have the 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 teams that just go out and get all the the youths right yeah but it's like getting the youths from different states now so it's not like you're not the best in texas like you're literally if you are the best in texas your ass is going to california to play with the california team yeah (laughs) you know so i've seen a lot of difference and i would love to probably get back or possibly get back into coaching at this point because i know the systems are different i even know even at the the youth level with like wells branch and things like that is different now um, just based off of people I've, I, I stay in contact with. But I think soccer is in a way better place than it was in 2010. Oh, yeah. it's. I mean, it's <laughs> it's definitely it's getting way more popular than it used to be. In. Oh, you'll see when we go to this goddamn Austin FC game. You're going to see hundreds and thousands of people that, like, I know, for, bro, I know you. <laughs> you. You didn't like <laughs> soccer yesterday. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I like soccer. I appreciate it, but. I was also like I never watched it a lot, mm-hmm. and I still don't like I never watch really any sporting event because I was always that active person. And when I watched it, I wanted to go play it. Like I didn't want to watch other people have <laughs> fun you. and like enjoy themselves playing hard on the field. Like I want to go play like play. basketball, football. I don't care. Not baseball. Baseball sucks. I hate baseball, baseball does suck. It's the can s- we admit that baseball sucks? Like baseball does literally suck. Like. I went to the Round Rock Express one time. Worst experience of my life. Like, it takes skill. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Like, it takes skill. But everything takes skill. Walking takes skill. But like, yeah, dude. Like, I just—it's so slow. I literally fell asleep at a uh, Tigers baseball game before. Like, sitting watching. It was supposed to be like a good game, and I literally fell asleep in my seat. I went to Round Rock Express. This is the only moment in life I know about baseball. I didn't watch the game. I think at that time they had like a playscape. I think I played on the playscape yeah. as a, like a mid-sized adult. Like yeah. I just, any any I, time I've ever gone to an Express game, it's always <laughs> just walking around the stadium and fucking with shit. Like, one, one time, never went again. I was like, this is so boring. Like, okay, all right, all right I get it. They're innings. Okay, so when is it ending? Like, <laughs> what the fuck is going on here? Yeah, because they can stretch to extra innings. I know. Like, like the, the, the little shit said from this time to this time. And I'm like, it's this time. Why are we not leaving already? <laughs> right, we're, we're four extra innings in. Like, can we go? <laughs> and the overtimes don't, the extra innings don't be fun. Like, it's, no. It's like not do or everyone, die. It's like everyone's still tired. The same game. <laughs> yeah, everyone's already tired and like, they don't want to hit the ball or throw it anymore. So everyone sucks. <laughs> like, oh, man. I just, I can't stand baseball. Yeah, it sucks. Or golf. Like, golf is not a sport either. I think golf is a sport if you're in your 60s. You can't retire to play a professional sport. But I'm saying it's only a sport if you're 60. So if you're 60 years old, you can't do other sports. So technically, it's a sport for your age. Because if you're 60 years old, all you can do is hit a golf ball. I mean, fair. <laughs> <laughs> but, I don't know. You're not, you're not hitting a baseball at 60 years old. You're yeah. not dunking at 60. You're Fair. not playing soccer at a high level at 60. Although the goalkeepers is wild these days. Like, literally, these motherfuckers be like 49. Yeah. Still in the goal. I was like, how do your feet move like that? Like, <laughs> Dude, I was I was surprised. I was watching like some UFC documentaries and stuff or even some fights. I didn't know UFC fighters fought until they were like mid 30s. Mm-hmm. And like, there's some that are in their 40s. Like, I just never paid attention to their ages before. And. I saw that and I was like, God damn, dude, you're fucking 42 years old and you're still just getting your ass whooped for a living. Like, Yeah, I mean, the, like, 
even comes when it comes to the UFC, like they weren't getting paid. The UFC is a still a new sport. Would it really pop off in like the early two thousands? Yeah. Like it's still a new sport. Like boxing's been around for hundreds of years at this point. Yeah. Right? But it's still new, promotion's still new. Like UFC fighters, even the biggest tickets were making a third of what a boxer would do. The same yeah. kind of in the same kind of like uh stadium and like box office. Like I I've never really bought pay per view for a UFC fight. Like I no. don't really care. I'll see highlights tomorrow. Like, I'm cool. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> what happened in the fight? Yeah. No, I mean, I think UFC's growing really big. Though. Like That's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's, super a, it's, it's new. Like, yeah. And I think a lot of people don't understand what new looks like. It's, a, it's even the plight with like women's sports, right? Women's sports started like 15 years ago. So yeah. their progression is not where men's sports are only because men's sports started in like 1960s. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, you you look at like old old men's film and look at like modern women's film. It's really similar. Like they just they don't have it, it's the infrastructure isn't there yet. And I know people. Everyone wants to be equal in this day of age. Like everyone wants to be equal. But like, just common sense, right? If you start something in 1960 or you start something in 2005, what do you what, what do you think the 1960 start is going to end up at this point versus the 2005 in 2022? Yeah. Completely different. Yeah. Well, they've had, they've just had more time to like branch <laughs> out, develop, and figure, and yeah, figure and shit out. out. Yeah. 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 So it's that's a, that's a conversation we've always had on the pod for sure. At least I've always had it because well, I just don't get it. I I, I I don't know. I I kind of also blame the people that complain about women's sports not being as big. Like, well, then then watch it. Like, have you been to a WNBA game? Have yeah, you yeah, ever yeah, seen it, girls play soccer? Exactly. Like, have you ever have? Do you sub, like? Where's your jersey, dog? Where's your jersey? <laughs> What? Who's the starting forward? Who's your, who, who's your favorite player? Who's the starting forward for the women's team right now, <laughs> as we sit? I don't know. I have no idea. I Amy mean, Wambach? I don't know. I think she's retired. <laughs> but yeah, but you can ask all these people that are like, women should get more pay. And it's like, yeah. that, I'm totally I'm down definitely. for it too. Everyone should get more pay. I should get more pay. <laughs> but did you, did you know that they actually, uh, on that subject of more pay, like the women's soccer team, like they actually tabulated it up. They get paid... More than the men's team, per per them act per their appearances with the national team. Yes, not their club careers. No, no, not not their club careers. Yeah, yeah. with per the national team yeah. because like the MLSL MLS MLS men's team, their costs are more allocated towards their current salaries. Right, so you get a percentage based off of what you're currently making. So if you're a player playing in Europe and your contract is, you know, two fifty a week, which is crazy to be like to even think about numbers like that. Like they're making two fifty a week. Yeah, a week. <laughs> <laughs> and the biggest, but the, you're getting a salary based off of your your income because your time. Yeah. Right. So, but with the women's things, I I think it's just allocated from what the nation provides them if i'm wrong someone will tell me but uh i think they get a balance based off of like an allocation for the team itself like okay so the u.s is gonna give you your whole team x amount of dollars and then per your players you get that divvied up versus the men's team where it's based off of their current contracts we'll see but also with the men's team like because I, I watched a, I don't remember this guy's name, but I watched a lawyer break down like the actual lawsuit case for the women's national and the men's national team, mm -hmm. whatever. And he breaks, like he brings out the contracts and the women get paid for sitting on the bench. Like they all get paid a base salary on the national team. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Yeah. The men, if you don't touch that field, you don't get a dollar. And the women also like they get. They get health care and all this stuff on top of it, like all these benefits that the men don't get. And they don't get that because it's provided by their club team. So yeah. they they were given the same two contracts and the men chose this contract and the women chose this contract because with their club teams, they don't get all these benefits. So why wouldn't they take all the benefits? But even after all that, like they make less per game, but overall, like they get extra benefits and they, that's calculated in there. But then they're also so good, like they win, and when they win, like the World Cup and stuff, they do appearances all over. They get two hundred and fifty thousand just for an appearance after they play in the World Cup, 
every time, every stop they make. So they go around, they stop at 50 cities, and they make $250,000. Yeah, that's just like women. They just want to, they, like, like, it, it, honestly, it's it's not an imbalance thing. It's an, an it's an imperfect structure, but it's no imbalance. Like, you get paid what you bring. Well, yeah, and then but they tabulated it up. If the women would have chosen the men's contract, they would have gotten, I think they would have gotten paid less overall because the women that weren't playing wouldn't have gotten paid. But they also wouldn't have had the benefits. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they also like they did like okay the men got paid this much at the end of the year like they tallied it up. You guys got paid I think they got paid like a hundred thousand dollars more than the men like overall. So they still made more money and they're still complaining they didn't get paid enough. They're and I don't and, and again people will tell me because people listen to this podcast. Um, they're talking about overall. Yeah, their plight isn't. Like just the national team shit. It's it's overall right. Yeah. Like there's players that are playing in Europe. There's women who play in Europe too because every EPL team has an affiliate yeah. women's team. Yeah. Absolutely. MLS doesn't have that. Yeah. Right. So these women are going overseas to play and get whatever wages they, whatever whatever deserve or don't deserve. But I, I just always, I have I've had arguments about this with women, but I, I just say hey, if I start something. On Tuesday, and the project is due on Friday, and you start something on Thursday, and the project is due on Friday, who do you think is going to be more prepared for the project on Friday? Yeah, whose project is going to be more <laughs> fine-tuned and everything. Like, yeah, and, and this is something I worry about because like, I have a daughter, mm-hmm. so like, I want her to you know, yeah. have a good living and do all this stuff, and if she plays professional sport, like, I want her to get paid. But at the same time, like you also have athletes like Ronda Rousey, who was the highest paid UFC fighter part of that date in yeah, history. She got knocked like, out a few times. Quite a few. <laughs> but but still, like she was making more than the dudes. She mm-hmm. was the highest paid fighter. She was the most exciting to watch. Everyone came and watched her. But it's still the same ideal of that too. Like the gap in between the starts isn't that vast. Yeah. Like women's UFC and men's UFC isn't that vast of a start. Because I think the UFC started in what, like two thousand? I I don't know the date. It was early. no, it was it was earlier than that. I don't think it was that like actual Dana White UFC. I think it was like in the nineties, early nineties, whatever the case may be. Because they used to women's, they used to fight like bare knuckles. Women's and, like, all kinds women's of shit, shit started around that time too. Like the the gap in between the starts is not that far off for sure. I, I watched an Untold on Netflix with I, I don't know her name. I don't remember her name, but she was like one of those original superstars like women wise and it was in the the early 90s that she was like super powerful and whatever yeah but like the gap isn't there like if ufc started in 1990 and then women shit started in 2010 there would be a gap yeah but when they start at the same time essentially there's not that much gap pay wise so a woman could make more than a man if the gap isn't there yeah these well, sports that, are that, gapped that goes down to like the marketing department and stuff and like Again, like you, if if more people would watch, you would bring in more revenue. Therefore, you would get more marketing budget, and you could get more people to watch. Mm, so I push back on the marketing thing too, because like, what are they marketing? They're just marketing, but marketing they're not. They're not even for out being there. women. Yeah, but they're not even out there. Like, you don't see like two fans. Like, if people are actually fans of UFC, they're seeing these yeah, people. Yeah, but you, you got to make new fans. Like, that's how you get more money is you got to make new – you got to have new mm-hmm. fans coming in. Because otherwise, you're, like, even even youths, like, you have to be like, hey, this is a cool thing you could do. And if you don't have the marketing out there saying, saying that, you know, you're not even going to get new fans. You have to create new fans to build more of a base. And, you know – you get little kids into it. Their parents are going to learn about it. That's like it's going to get spread around, and so it, it it comes down to, I mean, it's it's a complex issue, and I'm not going to pretend like I fucking <laughs> actually know what I'm talking about at all. Like I am, I just I don't I don't I don't take the marketing thing into consideration because like you don't know who Christian Pulisic is. He's the biggest soccer star in America right now. Yeah. And you're in America. But but he's on the man's team. So, like, technically, if he wasn't being promoted to you, that's not the marketing side's problem. That is the development problem with the whole actual industry. Like, you're not seeing it. You're not getting MLS commercials, I'm, I'm imagining, on your daily timeline. Because you don't watch TV. No. But 
if you were, if they if they were marketing better, quote unquote, in that situation, you would know who he was. Yeah. Same thing with women. Like, if you aren't, it's not even a marketing thing. It's more so a birth thing. Like, I'm telling you, it's strictly based off of the league's health. You've never seen a league come out of nowhere and just surpass everything that's already existed. No. Because, yeah, I mean, there's pe- <laughs> like, people don't like change. Like, that's just how it is. <laughs> like, even the UFC right now is well, 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 well more popular than boxing. But boxers are going to make more money. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you have gimmicks like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, whatever. You have people who are doing this sport, right? Regardless of the good or the gimmicky, whatever the yeah. case may be, right? They're still boxing. They're not doing UFC. Yeah. The brand is bigger because of the time, right? If they would have come out and say, oh, right, let's do UFC, that might have worked. But the money is in boxing because boxing's existing a lot longer than UFC. Yeah. Whether UFC is more fun to watch, which I probably think it is. I've watched the UFC fights. I'm like, yeah, fuck them up. I mean, fuck. it's a, it's a lot more, in, in my opinion. Like, it's just it's a lot more entertaining than boxing. Like, Absolutely. I, I think boxing is it's very entertaining. Like, it's really cool. And having gotten into, like, I'm not a fighter or anything, but I more understand it now than I used to. Yeah. So it's cool seeing like the skill and stuff that it took. The strikes you know? and kicks and shit like that. It's yeah. Way cooler. Versus than just having hand strength and. Yeah. Being well, because, yeah, you like boxing, you keep your distance and you fall down. You're not getting punched on the ground in boxing. Yeah. You fall down in the UFC, like oh, they go finish your ass. Yeah, like you're getting hammer <laughs> fists and you're getting you're getting jumped on and they're choking. They're trying to strangle you and yep. stuff. Like, it's just it's it's more entertaining in that sense. Like, yeah. there's more that's going to happen. Like, someone falls, like someone slips, you're still getting your ass whooped yeah. all the way down and Thanks. on the ground. You gotta be a strong motherfucker to, to do UFC. You also have to be a strong motherfucker to box. But boxing is always gonna make more money because it came first. I don't think it's always going to make more money. I think it is. I think there are things think, that are fading out. But the things that are fading out are being replaced by celebrity boxing, which is pushing the sport. Like the, the purists of the sport probably aren't going to dissipate throughout the years. But the actual sport itself, like people want to watch celebrities get beat the fuck up in the ring with a decently skilled boxer. They will watch that yeah. versus watching a... Well, they won't even watch that. They watched uh, Ben Askren. He's not even a boxer. The dude That's is a wrestler. That's what I'm saying. Like you're getting you're getting millions of pay per view buys to watch the person that you don't want to win lose. Yeah, and then they win, and now they can do this ten times. You have your Jake Pauls and your Logan Pauls, like Disney stars. Super. I don't I don't care about them, but <laughs> <laughs> but like you're 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 going to be more in tune to watch them try to lose. It's the Mayweather effect. Like he. <laughs> Stretch boxing out to a level to where you can just really be a YouTube star, and then people are gonna want to watch. Let's see. Then I think I think that boils down to like the marketing. Like Jake Paul, he's a brand. Logan Paul, they're a brand, and they market themselves to be. They're this annoying, bravadic persona that's just like you want someone to punch him in his face. But they're doing it at a boxing level. So like, if they had chose to do UFC. Right, like had let, let's say they chose to the Uf, do UFC, wouldn't even be as close as entertaining because if they're playing, the playing you can't play this sport. But uh, if they were actually doing the UFC shit, this wouldn't even come close to this because you can box someone at a level under you, which they did to start off with. Jake fought Nate Robinson, right? Yeah. Like it was just like athlete versus athlete. Yeah, like it's not fair when you're doing UFC because if you're playing, if you fought, I keep saying playing, you can't play fucking boxing. But like, if they were to to jump into that kind of like stratosphere of the USC, UFC, I don't think he would have popped off. Like he would have had his one fight, and that would have been the end of it. Because I think he would have gotten his ass beat. Yeah. <laughs> because and that's the thing. I think it takes a little bit more skill to be in the UFC because you have to be more well rounded in more things. Like boxing, you just got to worry about the fists. Like you don't got to worry about kicks and mm-hmm. getting tripped and taken down and thrown and choked you just you know yeah take a punch you got a good chin you'll be all right Mm -hmm. and to to an extent yeah that's okay in the ufc too like you see it guys have good chins and they 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 do okay i saw a dude bleed from his forehead and still was like let's go yeah but i'm pussy as hell like you hit me in my forehead bro hey hold up (laughs) hold up can we stop the fight (laughs) But then you then you run up against like a Khabib that is a wrestler or a you know Randy Couture or something that's just like, I'm tapping okay, out like I'm not gonna I, we if don't you give have me to an punch. arm bar I'm done 
I quit. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I still get paid. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think the mark the, the word marketing. Like when I when I've had these conversations with people, I'm like, it's not really the marketing. It's more so of like, what do you just want to watch? I have received zero marketing, or at least I did when it, when the Jake Paul versus Nate Robertson shit happened. Like, I mean, I saw it on a sports show once, and I'm just like, all right, cool, might tune in. But when after he got knocked out, it was like, oh, now I got to watch this motherfucker all the time now. <laughs> Like, now I need to watch it. And that wasn't marketed crazy. It was just like athlete versus athlete, in a sense. And I ain't heard from Nate Robinson since. I don't know where he's at now. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Sports are weird. Um, I think I like the, the the space soccer is right now. Uh, we'll see what happens in the next 10, 15 years or so. I think it's gonna. I think it's gonna take over. Like everyone's like, oh, soccer's not even that good and popular in America. Here, yeah. here it comes. Yeah. Here it comes. Cause it's, With more teams that are expanding and um, like the whole area is it's. God, who do I have? I had this conversation with somebody and see, I have so many conversations with people. I don't even fucking know who they are anymore. But like I said this years ago, because we were supposed to have a team in like 2011. Oh, really? We were supposed to have a team because we before they started to just expand to every fucking corner. There's fucking teams everywhere now like yeah. there was a team that was going bankrupt and we had like a team or a group that was about to purchase it and move it to austin um but what happened was i think that that team actually just decided to stay i think it was the columbus crew 2011 i remember being in uh some class in a porta potty i, I think i remember hearing about that <laughs> it yeah. was some kind of remember, remember when we had to go to class outside and those those little um portables yeah yeah i remember being on the computer looking at it as like Manchester shit, and then it was like Austin will purchase Columbus Crew, whatever, and then that fell through. I think a team from Sacramento, like not a team, but like a group of people who were like from Columbus or whatever, whatever the case may be. Um, the team was supposed to be here a long time ago, but it didn't actually. The stadium team didn't. I can't fucking talk. <laughs> the team didn't get built until 2020, 20, and then the pandemic happened, so we actually didn't start the season off. We actually started the following season. Yeah. And we didn't start the season in the stadium, too. So we started in using different stadiums. So we only did away games. It, it, there was some kind of weird dip or whatever. But I think it's I think it's in a good spot. Although I would like them to market Austin FC more. They don't really do that for our community. At least my community. Like, yeah. I don't know a single black person who even really knows the team really exists. Although there's a huge fucking stadium in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> it's not nowhere. It's next to the fucking domain. But, like, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah well and i with that like with the marketing like i heard i heard austin was getting a team mm -hmm. and i was like oh that's cool and i was expecting to see like a big push like mm -hmm. i was expecting to see like commercials and yep. like stuff everywhere and like billboards and stuff i didn't see anything until yep. like i went to a walgreens one day <laughs> and there was like a little rack of stuff and i was like oh shit did did the team show up is it here yet? like it's here now right <laughs> I heard that was happening. Did it yeah. happen? And I had to like, te I think I texted you yeah. and I was like, what the fuck? And you yeah, were like, we oh outside. yeah, we got a team, bro. I was like, <laughs> oh shit. I knew it was coming. They didn't say when. They just yeah. were like, boom, here it is. That's like, that marketing talk, bro. I'm telling you, like they, the marketing push is not a push to market it to people who don't want to see it. Like if you're not into soccer, not saying you're not into soccer, if you're not focused on what's going on in the league, you're not going to see it. That's See, and I, fact. I, I think that's, <laughs> I think that's a downfall. Like, it is. It absolutely is. You should, like, you should be trying to build your fan base, not not make your fan base stronger by making the fans that already right like there. it more dedicated. Like, you need to build it. You need to bring in people that haven't heard about it, or like they get a second look at it. Like, oh, I don't even like soccer, and then you're like, but watch this. Yeah. And they're like, oh shit, that's pretty dope. <laughs> and that's. Ideally, we live in a world that, well, that makes the most sense, which yeah. would make the most sense in marketing for like women's sports and other sports, too. That would make sense. Yeah. All they want is the fans that already exist, at least here in America. Like they just want the fans that already exist. Yeah. Cowboy fans are not illustrating anything else to people who aren't cow cowboy fans. Yeah. Like they're not going to reach out and figure out things for people who aren't already fans. They're an established brand. Yeah. MLS is an established brand. So they're only going to go for people that they know. So they're going to take whatever model they had for their first MLS team, 
and just replicate that. But see, at the same time, like the MLS <laughs> isn't as popular as the EPL, so why wouldn't you want to try something different? Because clearly, like it wasn't popular for so long. I mean, these owners of the MLS teams are all European. Yeah. <laughs> like, so David I, Beckham has his own team in, in Miami. Like, Kaka has his team. I think he's doing, I think he, he's a part of the Orlando team. Yeah. Or whatever. Like, the people who are owners of these teams are like Europeans. Yeah. So they're just going to repeat the model. They don't have to go grab fans. Yeah. They just have to say, okay, soccer's coming and just see who comes. Yeah, which all you're going to do is excite the people that Who already, already like, it. like it. And they're going to be like, oh, dope, we're yeah. getting a team. like, And that, yeah, I think yep. that's that's slowing things down. Like, you need to... Absolutely. They're not to, They're not going to reach out, even in, in the black community. They're, they're not going to reach out to us. I've never seen anything FC Austin related. I yeah. just happen to be a soccer fan. I'm already the established fan. Well, and that was kind of like... <laughs> that, 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 that same thing happened. Remember when we were skating, like, you just you didn't see a lot of black guys skating and they just didn't they didn't portray that because yeah. like the, again it's the same thing it's the the promotion of what you already have and then you just kind of live with that and see hopefully the people that you already have have friends that don't yeah and you like bring you'll, them in. you'll catch one or two i'm a part of fucking soccer fucking marketing you like soccer yeah <laughs> i didn't like it I, you brought me in bro no, I didn't bring you in. Like I remember, we were signing up for classes freshman year, and me yeah. and Brandon took your schedule and wrote you in to play soccer. I was down. I was always you had, down. You had to have a PE credit, and you were like, yeah. "I'm not taking PE." And yeah. it's like, "Okay, I'm, not, I'm then, not walking a mile." Then play this sport, and we just wrote it down for you. And you were like, "All right," and then you just went from there. Yeah, I fell in love with the sport. Not I didn't fall, and I because I'm a big food guy. Like that's a part of my profession as well. But like soccer helped me as a youth, like, understand different cultures. Like, I'm up here watching Italian soccer while they speak Italian. <laughs> like, I don't know what the fuck they're saying, but I see the game and I understand it. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, I know what that, I know, I know what they're saying. Like, I, I can't really illustrate the words in comparison to what they're saying, but, like, I see it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's <laughs> I mean, if you know the game, it's a universal language. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's crazy. <sighs> We're an hour in. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, let's just talk about some fall and some forty-seven <laughs> meters, and I'll get the lift, and we'll see if we can make it to the second half of the game. <laughs> hey man, I told you, dog. This is your birthday. We can sit here and talk all night if you want, dog. Like I'm not tripping. I'm down. I definitely want to. I've not been in the stadium at this point. I've I've been around it. Uh, prior, prior to it was opening, they had launched a marketing. <laughs> pitch to get me <laughs> to go um, i've been in the stadium but i haven't been in the stadium so i, I, I would still like to go and see what the move is yeah. but uh yeah final thoughts on uh thoughts like we've been talking about this whole time so there's a movie called fall that came out this year this is the most this might be the most bootleg movie i've ever seen in my life like this is <laughs> this is a theater release but it was everywhere really in clear picture Someone, someone who was about this movie released that shit. <laughs> someone who was a part of this movie released it to all mediums. Wow. <laughs> um, but I watched it. Uh, you've seen 40, 47 Meters Under? or 47, Down. Down. Yeah. Same exact movie. Again, the spoilers here. Like, sorry. It's the exact same movie. So, what girl thinks girl is still there. Girl out of there. Yeah. Same thing up there. <laughs> girl thinks girl's there girl is out of there but there happened to be just 3,000 or 2,000 feet in the sky versus 47 meters which may be the same no it's not that no? far down okay. <laughs> it's like oh shit no, it's, uh, but it's, yeah. it's like a few hundred feet I think okay I was about to say did they do that to us again meters, meters is 3 feet so 47 times 3 it's like 100 and 150 like that, I failed college algebra twice, guys. I don't know. Um, but <laughs> 40 times three is 120. <laughs> I don't know that either. I need a calculator. Uh, but same concept fall happens two girls who are dedicated rock climbers. Like, I don't know why that's a thing. Like, why are you a dedicated rock climber? <laughs> they, <laughs> they lose a friend, one girl decides to never climb again, other girl decides to bring her friend for one last climb. Like, yo, let's get you out your runt. 
So let's climb a fucking radio tower. Let's that's, not climb rocks. Let's climb a radio tower. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. That's 2,000 feet up because old girl wants to uh, put it on her social media. She wants to take a selfie at the top. Quick side note. <laughs> the dude, like the people that work and like, you know how they have to have lights up on top mm-hmm. of there? The people that change those only have to change it twice a year and they get paid like sixty seven, like $60,000. Yeah, I would imagine. You can't pay me to go up that ladder. <laughs> no, I would do that as a side job. Like, I'm terrified of heights, and I would do that for $60,000. Like, nah, but you got to have it not rusty. First of all, this shit was rusty as hell. <laughs> like, mad signs you should, like, stop. Like, they were at, like, 500 feet. They was, she was, I want to go back down. Other girl, nah, we got this. 1,000 feet. Uh, it's it's shaking it, a little. It's, no, it's good. That's always how it goes. Like, even the 47 <laughs> meters or whatever, exactly. like, the cage was all fucked up. Like... <laughs> The that's dudes exactly. didn't even speak English, and they were like, okay, we'll trust these guys. That's, like, exact, that's all I'm saying. This is the exact same movie, just like, in opposite directions. All these movies, like, <laughs> they have clear warning signs. Like, I always joke about this with my wife. Like, I would never, like, the, if I was in a scary movie, it'd last about five minutes. Because mm-hmm. be like, oh, there's a scary noise in there. Fuck that, I'm out. And that, there's the end of the movie. Tori, Tori drove off in his car or took his lift or whatever <laughs> and just left the house, like, Oh god, it was oh man, back in the early YouTube days there was like those voiceover shits. <laughs> and it was like there's a scary noise. Let me take a shower. Like <laughs> like what? <laughs> but yeah, same thing. And of course that's what movies are supposed to do. They're supposed to like illustrate dumb. Yeah. But this is like super dumb. And it, it I don't want to say the twist, but I'm gonna say the twist. Sorry guys, if you haven't seen Fall yet, bootleg, but eventually they find out like the girl was cheating was dating her husband or like fucking with her husband before he died on that rock cliff on the first one. But anyways, that's not the moral of the story. The moral of the story is would you rather be 2,000 feet in the sky, stuck on a platform, or be 47 meters, 158 feet down underwater in a cage? I would definitely be underwater because... With oxygen. Yeah, with oxygen. (laughs) I feel like there's a reasonable way to get out of that like mm-hmm. it's gonna suck and you might not make it out but there's still that chance that you can get to the top like you're way down there no one knows you're <laughs> or you're way up there no one knows you're up there and the only way up and down is now gone mm-hmm. you're screwed like you cannot get down like there's no oh maybe i can you know if i play this right i can make it no you're you're stuck <laughs> now you're dead <laughs> like get a, realize that fact and just come to peace with it and <laughs> You know, jump, have a good way on, have a good time on the way down, or I don't know, but like. But would you rather have a phone underwater that may work, or a phone up top that may work? It's not gonna work that high, dog. <laughs> it, do, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Same, like they're, they're way too high. Like they're, ironically, they're on a radio antenna and it doesn't work. No but, signal. <laughs> like standing on an AT and T tower, no signal here. Sorry, guys. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. That's funny. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I don't I can't do the high stuff because like for for at least one, you have oxygen down low and then you also have a cage in this scenario where you can like you can lay down kind of. Well, can't. but they they also had like rock formations that they could like hide under cuz like I saw that movie and like they they went through like a whole like scape down there where they were yeah. like oh they were they had to go find the part of the cage or more oxygen over there and they tried to get out. And then they had to go back, and they were like able to hide in rocks. This movie's like, the exact same. They drop the phone in the water, like on a little antenna that's sticking out of it. Yeah. So they have to try to like get down to like get that, and they get back up. Yeah. With the water, so it's it's the same fucking movie. <laughs> I just feel like it's more linear. No pun intended. Like, <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't, I could do the height shit because first of all, like you're on a platform. Like if you just misstep. Or the platform wasn't isn't that small. This is just the little photo being weird, but you can't lay down. You can't. Yeah. And it's also going through the fucking elements of like night and day. Yeah. Not wind. I, like I, you're gonna get wind. Windy as fuck up there too. Yeah. Crazy. You get dehydrated. Like you, your your fucking shit starts blistering up, and like you can't even drink water anymore. So even if they got rain or water up there, like you get dehydrated enough, and you can't you can't even drink. 
But yeah. underwater, if you're under, if you're in the water for, you know, oh, they were above the clouds. Yeah, see, and that's like, <laughs> oh, you're above the clouds, dog. You barely have air up there. Yeah, like, same twist. You get a you get a jet stream up there, and you just fly <laughs> like you fall off. Like there's nothing you can do. Same fucking twist. Homegirl was up there, like, yes, girl, we did it. We got the the uh, what what they have uh, a drone. They tried to get a drone down. They have a drone in the backpack. Oh yeah. Girl didn't. Girl actually didn't make it down to get the drone. And then fake girl. Yeah, I didn't make it. You up here by yourself. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing as the water shit. Later, bitch. <laughs> yeah, you think you could have picked me up? You're skinny. Like why? What? Like what's your thought process right now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely do the. I'll do the on the water thing. I'll do the. I'll do the water thing because for sure I already know what's going to. I mean, I don't already know, but I mean, I guess they both already know. Both ships is rusty as shit. Yeah, we'll see. You know, me personally, like I wouldn't want to do that. I just based on that scenario, like if I was those people, <laughs> I'd want to be underwater. But if I was gonna do something like climb a radio tower, like, and I knew I was gonna be that high. I'm taking a parachute. Like I'm <laughs> that's not, what I was thinking in my mind too. I'm like I'm y'all could have been so that. prepared. Like like if like just just abort one, everything. What just, if just shit just goes wrong? Yeah, just one parachute. <laughs> like that's all. Like one parachute can that would at least it might not stop y'all from getting hurt from falling that far down, but one parachute can hold two people, and it would have been a lot less than dying. I think they well just in the movie sense like they thought they had the ladder. The ladder was yeah. the safety. Like, they had been used to doing rock climbing and crazy shit. They were like, oh, it's a ladder. Bro, yeah. We can do it ladder down, right? Which, yeah, and I, I get that. <laughs> but that's just, like, my brain. Like, if yeah. I, like, even if I knew that ladder, that radio tower could have been built yesterday by the world's best engineers <laughs> and construction people. I'm still taking a parachute up there. <laughs> just because. I don't care. Like... Cause I might not be able to make it down. Like I'm gonna get up there and freeze because I'm scared. And then like the only way down is gonna be like, all right, man, you're gonna have to push me off, and then I'll deal with it after that. <laughs> yeah, another another uh, spoiler. Uh, the uh, so there's a ladder, there's a satellite, and then it's like free climb after it. Oh yeah, no, they free climbed to get up there, <laughs> and then the shit just did disintegrated. Yeah, no, in real time. So. Yeah, keep me in the water. I mean, I don't like water as it is, but uh, I'd rather do that than be up somewhere that I can't lay down. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're so focused on this lay down thing. Like, I want to lay down and stress. Like, like you want to lay down and stress. Like, I don't, I don't want to be stressed and standing man, up. I need to take a nap to figure this shit out, dog. <laughs> if I got oxygen, lay me the fuck down, bro. Like, we'll figure that out. I'll wake up tomorrow, kind of, maybe. I don't know. Up there, I can't even think about it. Like I, my ass would roll the fuck. Up. I roll off of beds at like one feet. Well, you're gonna take a nap underwater, and you're gonna float up, and the sharks are gonna eat you, dog. But we're in a cage. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the cage. That's why I think that's all. Really, the only reason I would I would choose the the water shit versus this shit. I'm in a cage, bro. There's some space. But what if there's other things down there than just sharks? I like, don't know shit. Eels, crabs, like I other I, little fish. I that barely pass biology. Take nibbles at you. I don't know shit. Mosquitoes take bits out of me now. I don't know. <laughs> Let's figure out this game. Let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. All right, bro. <laughs> All right. This is the Can We Talk podcast, episode 61, featuring my brother, Tori. We're about to go watch the game, hopefully. Hopefully, you'll see some pictures. Hopefully, we get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll, fi- we'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Um, You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you guys for listening. Goodbye. Later.